call dial 1-866-230-7761. To accept this call, press 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good. How's everything today? It's going good. Okay. How are you? All is well. All is well. So thank good you for calling. Uh, I hear you very well. I hear you very well. And thank you for calling the Vibe with Don, v- Don, Don Vito show. All and I'm right. um, co- um, about to interview you about your side of the story, what happened in your case and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, All can right. You, can you tell um, everybody what your name is, your first and last name? I'm Lori Griffin. Okay. And uh, what would you charge for? I've got an attempt to traffic. Um for robbery with a dangerous weapon and um, uh, common law robbery and an attempt to common law. Okay. And how much time did they sentence you to? Um, because it was in four different counties, this is my first time ever being in trouble with um, going to jail or anything like that. So, and I had a private attorney. I went to one county for the attempt to traffic, and it was a mandatory 70 to 93. They gave me 70 to 84, but I had to go back to court and get it amended for the 70 to 93 and a $50,000 drug tax. Um, About three weeks later, I go to Catawba County and... um, I get sentenced for two robbery with a dangerous weapon. They dropped uh, four trafficking, I think, and they gave me um, 70, I'm sorry, 50 to 60 months, uh, 50 to 70 months to um, run consecutive. The third county was um, two robbery with a dangerous weapon. They dropped eight trafficking. And I signed a plea for, um, well, I, I signed an open plea. So when we get in front of the judge, uh, the judge sentenced me to um, 80 to 108 months, um, 80 to 102, and they run consecutive. The fourth county, um, they dropped the robbery with a dangerous weapon to common law. And um, in an attempt to come along, and I got uh, 30 to, I'm sorry, 14 to 26 on the attempt and 20 to 33 uh, months on the common law robbery. Okay, so and, all uh, together. No, go ahead, Chris. Well, all together, I'm... I'm here for um, 15 to 18 years, but because North Carolina does the 85 percent, it's it's almost like 13 years. Mm-hmm. And I've okay. already done eight and a half. So you got to do 13 years, pretty much. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And what kind of robbery was this that you charged for? So. The drug trafficking should give it away that I had a terrible drug addiction. Okay. And um, I tried to manage it, and um, I went on YouTube at home, and I saw that uh, these people are going to pharmacies and holding up the pharmacies with a piece of paper, and the pharmacist is handing over these pills that I thought I needed, and... um, it's easy. It was easy. So, um, never been in trouble before. I didn't even shop with, but I was so into this drug addiction mm-hmm. that um, I got up this nerve to slide a note. I said I had a gun. Um, I did have an airsoft pistol in um, my coat pocket, 
but I never pulled it out. I never showed it to anybody. I never threatened it. I never said anything, but this note said I had a gun. Um, don't call the police. Give me all the oxycodone. And um, they did. They The first pharmacy I did was a CVS, and I slid the note. And, you know, they didn't know I didn't have a gun. And I, I, I see where, you know, um, I should do some prison time for all this. Yes, but um, this mandatory minimum is, is too much. So let me ask you a question. So you were sliding them notes saying that you had a gun and never showed a gun? Correct. Wow. And so when the one county dropped the dangerous weapon to common law, that's what I should have been charged in the first place is all um, common law. And that was where I, I got a post-conviction attorney to try to take it back to court to get it um, – reduced, but the DA of that county that I have this most time with is um, not willing to cooperate, and he said, if I come back to court, he's going to bring up these trafficking charges that he dropped. Trafficking holds a, man a mandatory minimum of the 70 to 93, so six of those, um, my lawyer said, I'm looking at probably 20, 25 years. So here I'm at the finish line. I have five years left. I don't really want to come back to prison with 25 years. So um, why would they charge you? So, to cut you off, why would they charge you with trafficking when you wasn't dealing drugs? Um, so trafficking is any time that you have pills, opiates, um, Xanax, stuff like that that's not prescribed to you. So uh, the weight. The first pharmacist, pharmacy that I um, hit uh, it was 2008 oxycodone. So the weight alone is how they figure out all those trafficking charges. The way it was explained to me. Um, so. So you were showing them a note saying that you had a gun, Correct. give me your drugs, and they just gave it to you. <laughs> yes. Wow. Scary but true. Yes. Wow. Because I mean, they figure, you know, they have customers in the store. They don't want to, you know, take a chance. They really do have a gun, and they just leave it up for the police just to handle. Hmm. So I'm fully on video, um, never been in trouble, you know, and but, uh, you know, it just kept – it's. It's like I hit the junkie lottery and I've got all these pills, but I'm not getting any better. It's just getting worse. But, you know, so you when you're getting high. And you're high. <laughs> yeah, I was getting high. Everything that you got, you're getting high from? Or you shared it with friends and stuff like that? Um, I did sell some pills, but mostly it was for personal. Wow. So let me ask you a question. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the story. So how was life growing up uh, as a young girl? Do you have any brothers and sisters, mother and father, stuff like that, normal home? Um, it was probably normal until I was about three. I'm a, I grew up in – I'm from Florida, so um, – and I have a younger sister – I'm in contact with my mother, but not so much my sister and my biological dad. Um, he is not in my life. Uh, he molested me when I was 13, and so. But my parents when it, were in a. Um, they divorced when I was three. Okay. Uh, graduated high school. Um, then I was married, and um, at 21. I have two kids, uh, they're 28 and 30. I have a grandson that'll be two in March. And um, I just got divorced last year so after 31 years of marriage because, you know, I'm in prison and he wants to live his life. So I'm not even mad. Hmm. Do your kids come to see you? I have had a visit with this pandemic but um, they used to, uh-huh. 
How close are you and your kids, you would say? I'm very, very close. They they um, support me in here. Um, good, good. Financially and, and, you know. So I, they take care of you financially. Yeah. They make sure you got what you need. That's good. That's good. As best as they can. Uh-huh. Right. I got you. So when did you first start using drugs? What made you first start using drugs? The first time I, I started smoking pot um, at age 13, um, I was molested by my biological dad, and um, I was trying to soothe that hurt. I didn't tell my mom until I was probably 14 or 15 because I was so scared. But, so how um, old were you when and you nothing was done. I was 13. Wow. So would you say that kind of like triggered your 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 mind to do some of the things that you did? Yeah, I tried to do the trauma, correct. And I'm not saying that that justifies my being in prison because it definitely does not. But um, at the time, that's how I was coping with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got you. And you were afraid to tell you were afraid to tell your mom. Definitely. And my worst fear came true. They didn't do anything. They didn't protect me. And so, um I still had contact with him up till when I until I got married. My husband at the time was like, This this isn't um a healthy relationship and it wasn't, but you know. Did your husband know about that? Know. What he did to you? Yes. Wow. Yes. When you confronted your dad, what did he say? He said it took two. Like, I was responsible. Like, I was um, a girlfriend or a date or something. Like, I um, was a participant, you know. He said what? And uh, he said it takes two. Um, wow. He thought, you know, that I was, like, willing or I was um, into it. Yeah. Wow. Your own day. Dang. So, so, okay, so I held on to, like, a – go ahead. I'm sorry. Is your dad still alive? He is. Um, my sister has contact with him. He has dementia, and he's in a um, like a veterans hospital in Florida. So or, did, um, did he did he try facility. to do that to your did he try to do that to your sister as well? No. Okay. But he did do it to another child. Um, my stepmom had told me that. Um, but they just up and moved away. They didn't try to tell the police or do anything. They just left the neighborhood or I don't I didn't um delve into that situation, but she asked me if he had done anything to me and I told her that he had and she said that's why she was divorcing him because he's a liar and <laughs> she ran off to Colorado. <laughs> wow. All right, so so what did you do after that? You 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 start living by yourself. What happened as you grew up? Um, no, I I live with my mom, and um, you have sixty seconds remaining. So look, we're gonna continue. I'll call, you, call. I'll call you right back. I right, call me right back. Yeah, I'll call you back. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will be monitored and recorded. For customer assistance, collection, or complaint procedure. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello, we back. Okay. Yes. So let's continue where you left. Uh, okay. Um, like I said, I graduated high school, and I would um, still continue to see my dad. Uh, he bought me a pickup truck. Um, I got an apartment, 
and uh, I would be back and forth between my mom and my dad in Florida, and also my grandparents, um, they were my stability. I relied on them a lot, and my granny helped me get through a lot of stuff, but she didn't know what to do either, and, you know. So I just, he uh, your pickup truck in what? <laughs> yeah, in, in an apartment. I had a job at his um, company, but um, he he uh, it's kind of like he was trying to make amends for maybe okay the way he had been. Mhm. Uh, so, and I had boyfriends, and my sister and her best friend moved down with me in, in my apartment in Titusville, and, um, and things were good for a while, but uh, um, my sister was driving my truck with her best friend in the truck, and they wrecked, and um, my her best friend was killed, so hmm. um, we, did, we uh, ended up getting out of the apartment, moving back home to my, I moved back home to my mom, and um, I got a job in close to Orlando, and uh, a friend of mine from high school worked there, and me and her used to go partying, and she really um, showed me the the life of cocaine, <laughs> and it just escalated from there. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So it went from weed? But then... Yeah. To cocaine, but we, then what? To cocaine. So then I um, took off with a friend, and she was from Maryland, so I loved to travel, and I went with her. And um, we went to this club in D.C., and I met my future husband. He was there. He was in the Navy, and um, he was at the Pentagon at this time just for some some kind of meeting or something, and uh, I could, um, I ended up not wanting to go back to Florida or stay there with her, so I went with him, and um, I went to Virginia, and I hung out with him for a while, and I kind of cleaned up, and I did really good, and um, he was... Uh, getting out of a marriage, and he went to Florida for a job, and I went with him. And uh, we ended up, like, two miles from where my dad lived, and um, I got the stuff from that he, my dad had at his house, and I did it all in an apartment with my, um, you know, my boyfriend. His name is Rex. Uh, he ended up being my husband. But I could not have no no contact or do anything with my dad, and it was fine with me because it just wasn't good. So I was clean for a good long time with kids, being married to him, and, and moving around a lot. And um, I think um, what put me back into the drug of this addiction here was I hurt my back <laughs> in 2004, mm-hmm. and that started on pain pills. Mm-hmm. And um, and you're always worried that you're going to get an, an addiction, especially if you fought with it, you know, previously. And um, but it happens, and you're not even really aware that it that this is this is what's going on. So you, you hurt your back and you started using um, the oxy oxy cotton whatever. Yeah, um, I started out on Vicodin, then they give you more tab, then morphine, fentanyl mm-hmm. patches, um, Dilaudid. It just kept getting stronger and stronger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a want and, a want uh, turned into a need, and then you form an addiction, pretty much, correct? Pretty much. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. And then you got to the point where, I mean, did you have any health coverage? How how was you getting it? 
Yes. Um, my husband had insurance, and um, I went to pain clinics, and um, more, more or less I was taken on by now. But eventually, you know, as the years go on, uh, people start snorting them. I didn't want to snort them. But then I saw um, on YouTube how to shoot them, bought syringes off the Internet. Um, on YouTube? Started. Yes. Yes. You on YouTube, you showed you how to shoot <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Are you serious? It taught me how to rob pharmacies, too. Yeah. I, I, I don't you blame mean? you, too, but this has been, I've been locked <laughs> up nine years, so this was in, like, 2010, yeah, 2011. And I went to rehab because um, I'd gotten a dirty urine uh, at the pain clinic for, I was taking morphine, but I took a, um, Took a set of my husband, and they kicked me out. So um, I started using heroin. And I did mm-hmm. heroin for about three weeks. My husband's like, Are "You want to do heroin? You can get the f out." Or you shoot me or you're rehab. I was, I was, I was shooting you. Okay. So I tried rehab. I did 16 days. I cried and bought it. I was not ready. I was not ready. I wasn't taking it serious. And um, I manipulated my way out and went home on a Suboxone um, maintenance. And I did, I did get on Suboxone for a while, but it's, um, it's just, it's not, I just wanted to do things my way and here I am, you know, and so let me ask you a question. So I got to get back on this one. You said YouTube taught you how to rob a, rob a, a pharmacy? Um, it taught me that it could be done, I guess. They show videos of how other uh, pharmacists was being robbed, and uh, you get into this rabbit hole on the, on the Internet of, it's happening all over the United States. Um, Seattle was the worst. And, you know, I would um, read these terrible horror stories about people going in and um, while customers are there and they've got guns, you know, brandishing them. I, I couldn't do that. I was not going to do that. Um, but... Uh, just a note alone. When I feel the, in in the desperation of, a, of the drug addiction, and I should have I should have went back to rehab. And but hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> wow. So. I'm laughing, um, but it's not funny. No, I know. I understand. You're in there now, so I mean. You know, you're not laughing at what happened, but, you know, it's like, damn, you can't believe you did that because you got cleaned up and your head is on right, so you're like, wow. So I get it. Correct. So, so you, you, um, so what happened? How did they catch you is what I want to know. How did they catch you? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I had, um, I had, uh, my husband's truck and I put mud on the license plate. Because uh, it's a truck, you know, and um, they, uh, so I did this pharmacy. I went on a spree in a, in over a two and a half month period. Mm-hmm. So they, they didn't catch me at first. And, um, and it just was so easy and this is what I'm going to do. And then you start getting addicted to the drone rush of robbing, I guess. And, um, um, I never really thought about the consequences of, um, trafficking, um, and what kind of time that holds. But, uh, at one point, um, I went to a pharmacist 
and the man said he wasn't giving me anything. He was, you know, not going to lose his job and this, that. And I said, um, I see the pills are right there. I just need one bottle. And he was like, no, no, no. So I left, went to another pharmacy. While, I, while I'm driving to the other pharmacy, the man is alerting the area farm, I guess. So mm. I didn't even walk in the door, and I heard code nine. <laughs> I said, that doesn't <laughs> sound good. So um, a man with a clipboard is coming at me. So I turn to go out the door, get in the truck, and I'm trying in, in a hurry. I clipped a car, and a little bit of the mud fell off the license plate. I didn't know this at that time, but I found out later from the detectives, and uh, the man wrote down the, it was like two numbers off the license plate, so they had a description of the truck, these two numbers, and my husband had a vanity tag from being retired in the Navy, so it wasn't very hard for them to find me with the truck description, there's only two black, you know, trucks like that or whatever, and so um, the next, so that happened on a Sunday night. I didn't get anything. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm sick. I'm so drug, dope sick. So the next night, she gets home from work. I get the truck, um, and I head a different direction to another CVS, and it's um, easy. I walk in, find my note. They give me the pills, and um, I uh, go out get in the truck, and I go up to um, a, shop, a little shopping center, and I'm making up this, this syringe, and um, I could see in the distance uh, Highway Patrol, and then like a Yukon or Tahoe, and I was like, well, I can't stay here, so I headed home. Get home, get the pills, take them to my bathroom. We had been robbed before, so I had a baby monitor in the garage. My daughter wants me to take her to her boyfriend's house, so I said, just give me a second. She said, Mom, it's all like there's men in the garage. I said, oh, I knew what time it was. I said, oh, my God. And uh, I looked out her window, and there's like six cars all in our driveway and in, in the um, on the side of the road in the neighborhood, and uh, I was I was like, oh, my God, I'm waiting for them to kick in the doors, like, on TV and stuff. They leave. I said, okay, grab your shit. I'm taking you to your boyfriend's. I, I'm i going to go on the run, so I'm packaging up these pills in my bra. I get some syringes, put them in my pocket, and my husband's like, what's going on? I was like, I got it under control. <laughs> I'm taking Tudor to a boyfriend. And I'm so high, I, it's just like a blur. I get in the truck. There's only one way in and out of our neighborhood. So I go out the, the way to go out, and they're sitting up there in, in, at the corner. They're waiting on the search warrant. Well, my daughter's in the truck. She's 19, but um, it was not. You have 60 seconds remaining. Can, oh, man. You, can, you, do, can uh, you do one more call? Yeah, I'll call you. Yes, sir. I'll call you back. And don't forget where you left off. Anson Correctional Center. This call is monitored and recorded for customer assistance collection. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. So they're sitting up there waiting for the search warrant. Um, I turned left and here they came. So my daughter is like, "What are we speeding?" <laughs> she <can> just. <laughs> Ask for a lawyer, ask for a lawyer. And when I pulled over, they had guns in our faces, pulled us out on the pavement. Um, they put me in one car, I put her in another car. When I got to the sheriff's department and um, they started uh, talking to me, I didn't take my own advice. I opened up, I cooperated. I told them, you know, nobody else was involved. It was all me. And that's just the truth. Um, they had the evidence, the uh, videos, the airsoft pistols in the truck, um, 
but I don't really remember a lot. I mean, it's been a long time, but uh, they kept calling it a gun, so I called it a gun. It's an airsoft pistol. It's plastic. There's no. It's not a dangerous weapon, and um, but that's you know what I got charged with. I sometimes I get upset that I didn't have the experience to ask for help or um, question things, and I feel like that's where the justice system fails some people. Um, I'm not uh, not bitter though. I'm I'm I. Of all the things that has happened, I'm still alive. I'm still able to get, uh, I have a release date. I have, you know, my health, right. my family, you know. Mm-hmm. You made you made a mistake, and you learned your lesson, and you're going to do better when you go home. Exactly. And you're not the only one that, that, that had problems like that. And just because, like you said, you got a release date, you're alive, a lot of people dying from COVID and all these other types of stuff. And you're still here, and God's giving right. you another chance to go out there and, and, and do the right thing with your life and your family. Yeah, yes, sir. You're taking full responsibility for what you did, and, and that's important. I know? do. Yeah, I'm not blaming uh, because it was it was all me. I could, at the time, it felt like this is what I had to do, and um, I mean, but you got to understand, you had a drug problem. You know, you had a drug problem. Right. And when you get a drug problem, most people who have a drug problem uh, get in trouble. You know, from 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 the yeah. the lower part of the world to to Hollywood stars have even had drug problems yeah. and did things. So, you know, it's still just you needed help, and you know, I guess the only thing to slow you down was to to, to get arrested and get locked up and clean yourself up and. Realize yeah. what what happened with you know with your life and go out and do better. I agree. And I, I didn't see I didn't hear where you hurt anybody anything like that. You only hurt yourself. No, um, I couldn't. I it's not their fault. It's my you know my problem. It's still like uh, what what so what do they do with drug addicts? If they lock them up and they want to take them off the street and um, it's not falling crime down, there's drugs in prison and um, they do have a a drug treatment. It's a joke though. I I um, when I first got to Raleigh, I was in it and they kicked me out because I went back to court and got all that time, and I really showed out. I. I this is the most clean time I've had at this since I've been at this facility, but um I uh I can't do that anymore. I just I just made a decision. If I can get stay clean in prison, how am I gonna do it out there? So correct. correct. That's right. You know. Mhm. No. Oh. That's correct. Have you took it any like any educational uh, programs and stuff like this you've been in there? So you could have some type of skill when you get released. What um, I worked in the kitchen and uh, I took culinary arts, but I didn't get to graduate because the teacher came to uh, school uh, drunk and they they fired him and they never had culinary arts to Raleigh ever again. They still they, they still don't. Mm-hmm. So then I went to Troy. I went to another facility and um, I took the thinking for a change and uh, I was involved in the, some of the church programs and stuff. But um, news, we were in a, you know, we didn't know how long we were going to be there. They didn't really have any classes or anything going on there. And this place, because of the pandemic, they've really not, um, they've just now, they're trying to start it back up, but we have active COVID cases here, so they don't know what they're going to do. Um, but no, I, I, um, I feel like they could do more for people, but, um, and right now, North Carolina doesn't have the finances to 
spend a lot of money on prison um, to set people up for success, and a lot of people want to say it's you know it's a revolving door. Oh well, yeah, if you didn't get uh, rehabilitated, you're going to come back. You're yeah. not going to have a job. You're going to be labeled as a felon. I stole pills from a pharmacy. I'm not going to be able, trusted. Um, so I'm limited. Now I have a $50,000 drug tax that I have to pay that because the state of North Carolina feels that was necessary to try to prevent this. Well, I didn't know that before I <laughs> walked up. But it wouldn't have been a deterrent because my drug addiction was so fierce. So, I don't know. So, let me ask you a question. So, um, you have, what, five years left? Correct. I'm going to honor grade. They're, um, they're putting in a waiver because... Um, I'm within 30 days of the 60 months for release date, so I have about five years left here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm um, scared. I'm scared to go to honor grade. <laughs> why you say that? Um, the it's freedom like there. It's like, it's like I'm scared camp. because I've been so long. Correct. Um, I've. I've um, heard some stories, but I'm scared that um, I've been locked up so long and I've just missed my family and stuff that I hope that I can trust myself to do the right thing and stay there and do what I'm supposed to do. You can, you can. And not pray on try it, to be you impulsive. Pray on it, you can, you can, uh, you can do it. Yes. And you got to so understand this is, your, this is your chance to come home and also it's a test. This is a test. If you can... If you exactly. can make this happen, you can be home and be okay. If you can't make this happen, when you go home, you're going to go right back into the same thing. So scary. So scary. Yes. Yeah. How much time before they put you in, 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 in the honor grade? How long before they put you in honor grade? You have to be within five years of your release. And I've uh -huh. been down uh, eight and a half years. Uh huh. So. Right. I believe you so. can do it. I believe you can do it. But and you, thank you, sir. You also have to have you have to do right. I um when I first got to this facility, I went to jail. Um, I um didn't follow the rules, but I've been doing so well this past. Like I think I haven't had a ride at like over two years, so. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? But before then, I was doing really good, yes. Are you tired of being in there? I am. I want the doors to open and let a lot of people okay. out. So the, so and, the honor um, thing, right now we got to worry about yourself. So the honor, the honor program is a, is a test to see if you're really, really ready to go home and you want to be home with your family. So you have to complete that. You know that, right? That's right. Yes, sir. And you got to stay yes, focused on that thought. Yeah. And you got to pray. Do you believe in God? That's right. I believe, I believe in a higher power, yes. Okay. I believe right. that. Um, okay. You I believe in there's here someone that there's, there's, a, there's a being? Or but there's, I've there's a been being exposed to a lot of religion, and I right. just don't know if I'm religious. So. Right. Well, you don't have to be yeah. a religious. To, as long as you believe that there's a, a source that's more powerful than you that created this, this world. Definitely. You, 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 your mind is in the right direction. You know? Your, your mind is in the right direction. But do you believe in yourself is the question. Yeah. Do you want right. to go and home I'm to your family? I'm getting too old to <laughs> most definitely. Okay, so that's um, this is your test right here. That honor my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. My mom said, uh, "Lori, what are you gonna do? You got no job. Rex left you. You got no um, driver's license." <laughs> 
I said, well, Mom, what do you want me to do? Just go cut my throat? No, I can't do that. I have to try. I have to try. And you're right. You can get it. You can find, a, you can find a, another partner. You can get another driver. All of those things that you right. lost, you can get back. Okay? Right. They come around it more than one time. It might be better than what I had. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. Um, it was a pleasure. This is what I want you to do. I want you to call me on Tuesday, and I'll give you the information on how to uh, to get one of your family members, like your daughter or whatever, to be able to see your interview on, yeah. on, on, on my channel, on YouTube, and stuff like that. Let me call Tuesday afternoon. Okay. And we'll discuss the details, okay? All right. Very good. All right, so Have a good day. For, Thank for you. calling the show. And, um, yes. Your, your side of the story is always important. Always remember that. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome, and, and I'll talk to you Have soon on day. Tuesday. Have All a right. good day. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Bye.